Hello and welcome. I am Scarperlock and this is City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. We are with Quintessence as our level 44 brute who has 18 and a half million experience earned and three quarters of a million to go to get to uh, level 45, 41 million influence and we are on a story arc for Maxwell Christopher who now wants us to find Bentley Berkeley who has been kidnapped by the Sky Raiders or at least we interrogated the Sky Raiders to find out where Bentley Berkeley is, my guess is these guys are probably the guys holding him are probably nemesis, because Sky Raiders are not generally found in the 40s at this level range. Yep, it's weird that it made you do a street hunt for Sky Raiders. It's like you know that that these are level 45 characters, 44 characters that I like. Sky Raiders cap out at like level 30. So you're just going to make me go hunt Grey Cons? Well, you know what I did. I auto-completed that. I'm not going to go hunt a bunch of Grey Cons. That's, that would be boring. Uh, fortunately, it was only 25 of them. So if I had done the hunting, it wouldn't have taken that long. But still, to me, it's not worth doing those missions, and so I don't. And you know, as I was hopping around Atlas Park, and I was thinking about how nice it is and how, you know, if it weren't for the supervillains, it'd be a nice part of the city to live in. Many parts of the city are, and I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I can think of very many, if any, places in all of Paragon City that have houses. Everything's buildings, right? Everything's apartment complexes and stuff. Um, and, and apartment buildings. I don't think they have they have a few sort of small apartments that are like just two stories that are like a small apartment building. But do they actually have houses in Paragon City? I don't think they actually do. Now, of course, it's a city, but even New York City has many areas that have actual houses, right? And um, not so much in Manhattan, of course, but in the outer boroughs they do, like in the Bronx and Queens. Um, so it's sort of interesting that, um, that there just aren't any houses at all in Paragon City. Oops. And yeah, I clicked the wrong thing. There we go. So we're on this story arc about the Nemesis. And, um, these guys are one of my favorite factions, actually. I think... First of all, the design. I love the design of the Nemesis. I love, like, the, the Prussian um, sort of steampunk outfits. And um, I really like all of the... Uh, the I like this. I'm not a, actually normally a, a big steampunk fan at all. But, um, but I just happen to really like the design of these guys. I think they're really cool. So this isn't a DeVito, we're just looking for Bentley Berkeley, so I don't know if we're going to go down that other hallway and try to fight a bunch of guys that aren't going to get us to our goal. We really just want to find Bentley. And being down that alcove, they're probably not going to uh, get in our way if we have to lead him out. Which I don't know if we have to do. So I'm actually going to stop fighting this guy and just look around the corner and see if there's anybody else. Mostly because if there was anybody else, he would juice them if he, after he gets knocked out. Fortunately, there isn't anybody else, so I can defeat him with impunity. And don't have to worry about him buffing his nearer neighbors. I don't know if he's going to buff these guys. I think they're too far, yeah. But there's no Bentley Berkeley down here, so we're going to just go keep looking for Bentley. Is he up here? Nope. <clears throat> yeah, I'm assuming he'll be down, right? They usually try to put these guys in, in the furthest way in, but there is some variability as to where um, some of the spawns appear, including hostages in these missions. Um, so... It just depends on where the RNG, the random number generator, decided to put him out of the two or three possible places where he could be. <clears throat> By the way, um, I believe 
in the next reboot, I believe it's tomorrow, today is April 24th, and I believe they said on the 25th when they reboot the servers, they're putting issue one live for rebirth, and so that means that there will be some new features. I haven't really kept up on what all of them are, but I believe there's a new archetype coming called the Guardian, which I suspect will be like the Sentinel, but I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at any of the literature on it, so... <clears throat> Once I find out the details of that, I will mention them here in the, in the channel. In case anyone um, wants more info about it, I may play around with Guardians, depending on what kind of what the AT is like, and um, just see you know how they play, so that I can report that to you guys. <clears throat> in case anybody's interested, I I got a kick out of Sentinels. I I got one to like level 20. I didn't get to see the high level game with her, so um, I can't really speak in in great detail about it. Um, Sentinels have um, ranged attack, <clears throat> like the sorts of attacks you'd get from a blaster and as a primary, and then defense, like scrappery defense as a secondary. However, their ranged attacks, I believe, <clears throat> are not quite as powerful as a blaster's, and their defenses are nowhere near as powerful as a scrapper's. At least, they didn't seem to be to me when I was, um... when I was uh, playing the character. And she, she played, like, obviously the character had a lot more defense than, um, a blaster would have. But... She didn't. She she didn't have anywhere near the defense a scrapper would have, if if I re recollect correctly. And it's been a good year since I've played that character, so don't quote me on that. Maybe somebody who has played Sentinels in on Homecoming, you can't play them here, can comment about what they're like. Um, and so I don't know what the Guardians are. I mean, Guardian sounds defensive. Um. So I suspected somebody with a defensive secondary and some sort of an offensive primary, so it, it seems like the idea of the range primary might be what they're going for, but it could be something else. So I'll, I'll find out, and I'll let you guys know, um, and I'll try playing it a little bit and let you know how it plays, at least in the low levels. Obviously, I'm not going to... While I've got this character active, I'm not going to go play that character to level 30 or something, but I'll play through the tutorial in a couple of low levels and just... Um, let you guys know what I think of it when uh, the time comes. So, sometime at, at in the end of by the end of this season, I should be able to let you know what I think of it, and I'll report in the next episode or two what it's like in terms of the primaries and secondaries, because I can find that out from the character creation screen. So this is called issue one of Rebirth. Um, So they're, I, I guess they're not numbering it the way... Homecoming, I believe, is numbering it as they're calling each patch like a page of the current issue. So it's like, I don't know, issue 26, page 1, page 2, page 3. And I guess they're doing that so they don't have to keep raising the issue number given that they're, they're sort of building off of <clears throat> where Leandro had it, which I guess was issue 26. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember now how they numbered it. 24 was in beta when the game was mothballed. 23 was the last live. 24 was in beta. I think the way it works is 25 was stuff that was maybe in the code, mostly commented out, work beginning to be worked on in the pre-alpha stages, so it was like on the drawing board. And then I guess issue 26 is all of the stuff that Homecoming did independently, and maybe Leandro... I feel like they might actually be on issue 27 now. Again, if somebody wants to mention in the comments exactly where Homecoming is, <clears throat> I've not kept up on any of that because I play on Rebirth now. So other than occasionally logging in there to play a, to play my Brood or to play Silver Phoenix a little bit, I don't really pay any attention to Homecoming. <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't played a lot of attention to the patch notes on Rebirth either. Because they've almost always just gone up for the test server, and I don't play on the test server. So Berkeley's not here, actually. It looks like we're going to get a note about him. Maybe he left us a note in the desk. <clears throat> I 
It's funny how with many of my characters, Nemesis makes me switch up my attack order, right? Because the lieutenants will juice the minions. <clears throat> so you got to attack the minions first. With my martial arts scrapper, Silver Phoenix, I always attack the minions first anyway and left the lieutenants and stuff for last. So it didn't ch really change my attack order that much other than not making trying not to make ac you know make mistakes and accidentally take out a lieutenant early. But with my other characters like my stalker who can one shot lieutenants or this character who I want to use to debuff the lieutenants, I normally attack and defeat the lieutenants first and leave the minions for last and I have to switch it up. And it's sometimes hard to remember because it's just such a reflex after a while as to who you attack first. <coughs> But it's just sort of interesting how I had to change mindsets for all my other characters. But not that much for Silver Phoenix. I just had to make sure not to make a mistake. Because with Silver Phoenix, I would try to attack the minions first. But if I ended up targeting and being near a lieutenant, so what, I'll just take him out. You just got to remember not to do that with Nemesis. Okay, so let's talk to our contact, who says... <clears throat> Nemesis had kidnapped... Berkeley for medical experimentation, that's pretty sick, but I wouldn't put it past Nemesis at all. It explains what they want with him, but it still doesn't explain why they'd want to conduct medical experiments in the first place. Biology really isn't Nemesis's strongest area. With the information you found there and what we have in Lockhart's file, I should be able to figure out where they might have taken Bentley. Check back with me soon. So I guess now we're going to go get him. He says, I was able to find where the Nemesis soldiers took Bentley Berkeley. I want you to, all I need to do is rescue Berkeley from Nemesis forces. Not easy, I know. Well, we can take care of that. And I guess we're going to auto teleport since it's in Craze Folly, which will be a lot of jumping. But yeah, when you think about it in terms of the buildings in Paragon City, even like Talos Island, where you would think there'd be a lot of beach houses and stuff, there really aren't. It's mostly apartment buildings and business buildings. There really aren't very many structures in Paragon City you could call a house. <coughs> oh, and we're right near the entrance here, so we didn't actually need to auto-teleport, but that's all right. We only have this one mission to do, and then I think we'll call it quits for today. And again, we've got Nemesis, so... Um, Fighting the minions first. <clears throat> so we're moving along. We have a couple beats left to get to level 45, guys. And as I mentioned last time, that will be the end of this season when we finish this story arc. We should be we should be at level 45 before that, but we'll certainly finish it by the time we we'll certainly get to level 45 by finishing the story arc, if not sooner, because of how much XP you get for completing story arcs. Um, and then it will be uh, time for me to um, kind of work to find the next story arc, and then we'll do a level 45 arc, and we'll do one for each level. And it looks like the council's involved here, too. Hi, guys. Have some dark melee. You've heard of a knuckle sandwich? This is a dark matter sandwich, right? A dark energy sandwich. With some knuckles on the side, I guess, because I'm also punching you. I always hate to miss, but the worst thing to miss is that shadow mall. It's like you just have to stand there and watch yourself whiff repeatedly. Knowing, knowing from the moment you start that there's nothing you can do about it. As soon as you whiff the first blow, you're going to whiff them all. Like that. And you just have to sit there while the game mocks you with your missing. I have to say, this character has been a lot of fun. Is absolutely second favorite to martial arts I've liked it better than the mastermind and even better than the stalker stalker's great and I love claws but dark melee is just so freaking cool and I'm really enjoying the synergy between energy aura and dark melee 
it works really they work really well together so I'm very much enjoying that we've now maxed out our salvage again these guys are plus four to me which gives even more XP as you can see um, 4,152 XP for a single minion of the Dragoon type. They, sometimes the minions are worth different amounts. You can see the Jaegers aren't worth as much, but it's on average about 4,000 XP per minion at level 4. That's just insane how much XP you get. And I believe, although I'd say don't quote me on this because I'm not 100%. Again, I'm remembering sometimes um, what was said to us on the forums, like even in beta and stuff. But I'm fairly certain that the higher the enemy is, uh, I know that the high, I know for sure that the higher the enemy is in rank, the higher the chance it will give you a drop of something, either salvage or enhancements or whatever. An elite boss and an archvillain, I think, always will give you something. Um, if not always, it's very, very often. Then bosses often give you a drop. I would say it's probably more than 50% of the time. Lieutenants are maybe 40-50% of the time, and then I think it's about 25-30% to 30 of the time with a minion, if they're even level to you. But I think there's also a slight increase if they're above your level as well. So I, I think that like a plus four minion is a lot more likely to drop something, to drop a salvage or a recipe or something, or an enhancement or an inspiration if you have it open, than a, um, than a level plus one or a level plus zero. I could be wrong about that. If anybody knows for sure, Again, feel free to leave comments and uh, inform both me and anybody else who's coming along reading this and uh, watching this and reading the comments. It's always good to kind of know how things work. So I know for sure that the drops are more frequent by rank. Right, you're not, almost never going to get a drop from something like a, an underling, like a Rickty Monkey... There's like a 25, I think, I, I want to say it's something like 25% for minions, something like that. Um, and that a drop includes inspirations, enhancements, salvages, and recipes. Um, I want to say it's something like 25% for minions, 50% um, for lieutenants, 75% for bosses and 100% for elite bosses and archvillains, something like that. I'm sure it's not that neat and tidy. And I would bet that it's also a few percentage points higher per plus of the of the enemy. So maybe it's and, and again, I'm making up numbers, but I, I, I don't think it's too far off of this. Something like 25% chance for a plus zero minion, maybe 30% chance for plus one, 35 for plus two, and so forth. Again, I don't know um, the exact numbers on it. If anybody does, feel free to let me know in the comments. But I definitely have the sense that you get more drops when you're fighting higher level guys, not just when you're fighting higher ranked guys. And I have a friend who when it comes to... Well, let's pull this guy out, because there may be guys just down the ramp, and I don't want him to buff them. So I'm just going to pull him back. Come on. Come on over here. Just get away from there a little bit. That should be far enough. Um, yeah, I have, I have one friend who... Gosh, I haven't talked to in a while. I used to play these games. Um, my best friend and... I got, like My two best friends that I used to play MMOs with... They were always obsessed with knowing the numbers, and my best friend is, like, even worse than, than... Like, the the one that I used to play with that I don't play with anymore... This is the same guy who used to be, like, the most awesome GM I ever played with. He was a super numbers guy. He, he was a business and math major, and so he always did everything by the numbers and calculated everything to the nth degree. 
the other guy who's my best friend and I still play games with and stuff, he never used to do that, but he's become even more like that now. He's very numbers oriented. Um, my, but I have this other friend who used to play with us a lot. And even though he was a really smart guy and into math and stuff, he would he would say, oh, "No, I don't want to know all the numbers because it kind of ruins it, right? I rather just I rather just play, and I don't want to calculate all the numbers and know all the percentages and everything." Um, and we got two captains here, so we're gonna have to watch out in terms of buffing each other. So we're gonna be pulling the first captain up the ramp. So you're going to come with me. Just taunting him to make sure he comes. Go around the wall so we break line of sight, which forces him to approach. And this is far enough. Right? The idea is just to pull him away from that guy so that he doesn't buff that guy. I think this should be far enough away. I think his buff would extend maybe to that white line, but no further. So yeah, um... What do you, so what do you guys think? Does knowing all the numbers increase your enjoyment of the game, or does it kind of ruin it? Almost like it's spoilers. I'm kind of on the fence. I want to know some of the numbers. I, I like knowing how things work, but I don't necessarily like optimizing to the nth degree relative to how things work. Right? And you can see that with this character. I'm not obsessing over sets. The sets I picked for her are ones that I think... Um, are appropriate and I think buff the power that they're on really well. Obviously, the two archetype ones are non-negotiable. You, you don't, you can't choose any other ones, right? Um, but things like um, smite being uh, crushing impact, I think it works. You you hit really hard, and siphon life being touch of the nictus, since nictus are kind of dark energy. I think that works. We're gonna put Touch of Death on Midnight Grass, which caps out at level 40, right? It's not optimal if you uh, check. There are other ones that cap out at level 50 and may be more powerful, but I feel, and also some of them are maybe not as powerful, but cheaper. To do this is going to cost me like a thousand reward merits or something like that. Um, so it's expensive and they're, and they're capping out at level 40 might not be optimal, but I think Touch of Death is thematically appropriate for this character and so um, I'm doing things that are somewhat effective but not maximally effective and I'm trying to do things that are effective based on the concept I have for the character and also just you know my willingness to do things like play the market and stuff which is pretty low so um, and there are two lieutenants there so I'm I'm kind of like I know the numbers almost as well as a min-maxer, but I tend not to do the min-maxing. Some people are like, I don't care about the numbers, I just want to do what's fun. And other people are like, I really want to know the numbers and I want to max everything out. So um, so what do you guys think? What's more fun for you? There's no right answer, really. Um, my friends who loved maxing the numbers out had a lot of fun doing that. And um, there's, a, there's a degree to which Knowing the numbers and being somewhat effective with them is fun for me, and then there's sort of like a plateau, right? And beyond that, I'm just not really interested, and um, i rather just play. And as I mentioned, oh, quite some time ago, maybe it was even in the Nightmare Last videos, I can't really remember, but it was, it was a long while ago. Um, when I do these characters and I enhance them and make choices, I, I, t I don't look things up. And I don't use, like, mids or pines or anything like that. I just go with the tooltips, and then I go kind of by by my gut, kind of by instinct or feel, right? This character feels like it's missing a lot. I'm not going to sit there and count the misses, right? It feels like it's missing a lot. I'm going to put more accuracy. I'm going to get focused accuracy or put more accuracy on it. This character feels like I keep having to... Um, drain endurance and get endurance back I need to put some reduced endurance cost this power feels like it's not recharging fast enough to make me happy I'm going to go put a recharge enhancer on it and so I kind of do that rather than maxing it out now some of that just has to do with experience 
I've played the game enough that I know how it, quote-unquote, should feel to me in terms of the timing of things. Um, but but some of it is just that I don't want to I don't want to do that much of the math. It's just not I'm not playing I'm not playing the game to run spreadsheets, right? And so um, you know I, I do enough spreadsheets in my job. I don't need to use spreadsheets for the game. So I'm not that interested in doing it. Doesn't make it right or wrong if you are. Um, but feel free to leave comments. What kind of a player are you? Do you are you a spreadsheeter? Do you do you really want to have all the numbers and know all the numbers and make your character really effective by the numbers, or do you prefer more to kind of play by feel and just kind of intuitively without all the numbers? I'm guessing he's not in here, but I'm also guessing we're going to have to lead him out. So let's take these guys out so that we can get him out without too much aggroing. Our path's that way, right? So what we want to do is clear this platform, and we also want to clear these guys up here so they don't look down and aggro to us. And then I think we'll be okay in terms of... Um, in terms of having cleared enough of it that we can get him out if we have to lead him out. I'm just not sure. I can never remember which ones of these are escort missions and which ones aren't, especially since these old classic um, missions were never um, escort missions. we got to take the minions out here first. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. They were never escort missions originally. And so I've played all of them without escorting, even when some of them now are escort missions. The one thing about plus fours is it really does kill your two hit. Let's see, Dragoon, okay, that's what we want. One of the things I've always thought in terms of like the buffing that the colonels do when they get knocked unconscious is when somebody when one of these guys get bu get gets buffed they should instantly aggro at a long range right because it should be it, you should they should know if they're feeling the juice of this guy and i don't know if that's got him far enough away so let's pull him even further but if they're feeling the buff they should know okay one of my comrades just got taken out Because I've got this, like, adrenaline high that only comes from when these guys get taken out. So if these guys get buffed, they should know that the colonel, that a lieutenant, just got defeated somewhere nearby. Right? This guy should now aggro to me. Because he knows one of his colonels just got defeated. But he doesn't. He just stands there being juiced. Which is kind of... Seems very out of character. And that Midnight Grass does so much damage now with the, with all the enhancements on it. So I think we've cleared enough that we can get Bentley out. We don't need to clear the rest of this room. By the way, you can see, we're, we're fighting plus fours, guys. In a lot of these missions, almost the whole mission is plus fours. And we're just crushing them. This character is awesome. I still wonder how you can soul drain a robot. I personally think it shouldn't work. It should you should get a little floaty word above their head that says ineffective or something, unaffected. Because they don't have a soul. 
And there's some conversation going on up ahead. Looks like there's a false nemesis above. Fighting in the uh, Cloud City Empire Strikes Back tunnel there. Ventilation shaft, whatever it is. You can see how much we just crush these guys. Double bosses. Okay, this is going to be cool. Alright, there's a sniper up there. He will not follow me. So we're going to pull these guys down. Actually, I'm going to go after the nemesis first because he's going to go D-solid. Um, at some point, and then when he does that, I will turn my attention to the vampire so that I'm not wasting time waiting for him after the vampire's already been defeated. I think this blow will be the last one we can get in, and then he's going to go intangible. Maybe not. There he goes. All right, so now we go after the vampire. And then after we defeat the vampire, we'll be able to turn our attention back to Nemesis and take him out. You can see I'm fighting two bosses. My endurance and my um, health are maxed. Oh, that's not good. We missed with that. And now they're starting to take a toll on me. Oh! And I was defeated, so I got a little overconfident, I guess. Uh, let's just go on back. Um, yeah, so what happened there is the Soul Drain has a really long animation, and I should have hit the heal before I hit the Soul Drain. And my guess is what happened, I wasn't really watching, is the, uh, um, the luck that I had taken must have run out, and I should have probably downed another one. And I just figured, ah, he's going to die so fast. I don't need it. And they got me. So we'll just head back. And they won't be any problem. I think, I hope... Nemesis has, the false nemesis has um, burned his intangibility. So I should be able to just take him out instead of having to worry about that. Um, I don't think he can use it again. I might be wrong about that. I mean, I don't, it depends on how long it takes it to recharge for him. But I think it's, I think he can only do it once unless you like let a really long time go by and it hasn't been that long. And my guess is Bentley Berkeley will be behind them. And we don't have to worry about aggroing anybody here because we've cleared this part out. So now we just have to come back here and take this guy out. This deflection. Oh, we got to put on focused accuracy. Oh, no, nope, he could do it again. That's really annoying. Alright, I think at this point we're going to put on overload. I think we're going to need it. Just because I can't take them both. I can't take the nemesis out until he stops being a pain in the ass, and um, consequently, I have to fight them both. Right? You can't really take the nemesis out until he stops turns that power off. Alright, now we've got him. Uh, two can play at that game, buddy. I 
And now, of course, the sniper's shooting at me, which is kind of annoying. So this was quite the setup in terms of um, a challenge. You've got two bosses and you've got a sniper shooting at you. Now, I pulled the bosses away from the sniper the first time. And we don't have to worry about it at this point because this boss should be dead. Come on. Look at this. He gets down to a sliver. And I miss him three times in a row. And he's still alive. Unbelievable. Missed again. Yeah, sometimes I'm convinced the game cheats. I'm sure it doesn't, but it sure feels like it. Like the GM deciding you're not going to kill this guy and you're going to just miss him over and over again. While he's got, like, all, all I had to do was hit him one time, and I missed him so much that he regenerated enough that the next blow I hit him with still left him alive, and I had to hit him again, and then I missed him again. So there was one blow left to do, and I, and I missed him, like, five times out of six. That was annoying. All right, so... Really should not have been defeated in that last um, fight. That was just sloppiness on my part. And overconfidence, I guess, because I had just been plowing through everything so much the last few sessions with this character. All right, so we freed him. We didn't have to run him out. Let's talk to Christopher, who says... According to what Berkeley told you, Nemesis captured him to study his immortality and compare it to his own theories on immortality. So the Nemesis is trying to live forever and figured he could get Bentley Berkeley to show him how to do that. All right, folks, I think we're going to stop there. Um, this episode has been over 30 minutes, so we're going to stop there. Until next time, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes on the Rebirth server.